I'm Greg Jarrett, and you are in the strategy room. The U.S. Supreme Court, only a matter of days, will take a second pass at the legality of Obamacare, specifically deciding whether the subsidies that are propping up millions of policies are legal. If the justices decide to gut Obamacare, debate is raging over what happens to millions covered under the law. Joining us now with reaction, political strategist Lee Carter and Jessica Tarlov. Good to see you both. Good to Thank see you. you. All right, so the White House says, look, this was just a typo, a hasty mistake. We meant to give everybody who's eligible subsidies, just not those with state exchanges. You buy that argument? Yeah, I buy it. I mean, they, they've made so many faux pas about this throughout the entire rollout and early implementation. Why wouldn't you believe it that it was another mistake? Because the people who crafted the law are out there specifically before this case ever came about saying this is your incentive to create an exchange. And if you don't create an exchange, you won't get a subsidy. So they intended to write it this way. And now they're just saying, oops. Well, we'll find out if it was actually intended Jonathan that way. Gruber was out there. He's on videotape. You can watch Jonathan it on Gruber YouTube. Jonathan Gruber says a lot of crazy things. <laughs> yeah, including I'm not going Americans with are stupid. Yeah, that, that was not nice. <laughs> and that's not true. And I think he's been sufficiently uh, penalized yeah. for that one at this point. Um, look, bottom line, in 2012, the U.S. Supreme Court, together with Justice Chief Justice John Roberts, sided with the liberals and upheld Obamacare. Mm -hmm. They're not going to make a change now, are they? There's no way that you can really make a change right now. The toothpaste is already out of the tube. It would be like going to a kid's birthday party and saying we're going to take away their pony. It's just not worth it for the Republicans to keep at this. This has got to stop being a political debate and saying you're right, I'm wrong, or I'm right and you're wrong, and making this about Republicans versus Democrats. Right now, this is about the American people. And whoever can frame this around the American people and saying this is about benefiting them and this is how we're going to do it is the one that's going to win. And I don't think that's going to be the Republicans right now. You know what helps the White House argument that this was just a hasty, hasty mistake is that they have made 42 significant changes to Obamacare, 24 of them unilaterally by the President of the United States. So this 2,700 page bill was absolutely replete with guffaws and mistakes. I mean, there's no piece of sweeping social legislation that's gotten it right out of the gate. I'm not saying that this one couldn't have been more finely tuned, I guess, at the start. Um, but I think to Lee's point, I think you're exactly right. I mean, the issue is we have the law. What are you going to do now about it? How are we going to reform it to make it work better for Americans? I mean, we were talking about, like, what happened to Coburn Care? I mean, there are ways that we could blend Obamacare and Coburn Care and let the president still have his signature law. I mean, he wa that is his legacy, and he is not giving it up. So what can the Republicans offer in terms of compromise that the president can get behind as well? Like the individual mandate, it's not going anywhere. Enough right. talking about it. You know, you want to talk about the medical device tax. It seems dull to me. But, you know, talking about purchasing insurance across state lines, right, tort reform, these things that can be done in the next year before it's all 2016 all the time. But, you know, the sentiment is still there. Millions of Americans lost their policies. They lost their doctors. They lost their hospital. Average premium went up, not down, as the president promised. Um, the tax was disguised as a penalty, and then Obama's people went to the Supreme Court and said, nah, we were just kidding. So, I mean, there's a lot of rancor and anger mm -hmm. that I'm wondering, will it ever subside? I think it's going to have to. And I think what we're starting to see now is that people all know someone who's benefiting from Obamacare, even though there's all of the other people who say that they're getting harmed. There's somebody that you know. I was just talking to somebody here that said, you know what, I was totally opposed to it, but I have a cousin who got leukemia and now is now getting care as a result of it. Yeah. So how do you take that away from people, especially going into a presidential election? You want to be seen as compassionate. You want to be seen as helping people. And right now, it's just not being framed that way. It's got to be framed about how are we going to fix this problem that does exist? Well, the president promised that his uh, plan, Obamacare, would, quote unquote, cover every single American. Well, the latest figures suggest close to 30 million Americans are still uninsured. You're spending a trillion dollars wreaking havoc across the industry for what? Well, for all of those who are already covered. And I mean, seven to nine million. 
You act like that's like a small thing. That's a lot of Compared people. Compared to the 30 million uninsured still, yeah, that is a small well, thing. Well, I mean, how long? It, so we've been dealing with it. It was the rollout started in the fa last fall, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's still time. CDO I mean, this predicts is predicts that 10 years from now, there's still going to be 25 to 30 million Americans uninsured. 10 years. So what's the solution then? I, I, like, let's take it that there are problems with the law. W what's the solution? Because it's not going away. Well, Republicans have a lot of solutions. Um, get rid of the individual mandate, get rid of the medical device tax, change the full uh, time employment definition, uh, get rid of the medical board, lower the subsidies, create a new copper plan, uh, and to some extent withhold funding for those portions of Obamacare that's not working. What about those ideas? I think there are a lot of ideas. I mean, I think what's most important right now is to understand what are the American people hearing? And what the American people are hearing from Republicans right now, which is really unfortunate, unfortunate is what are we going to stop? What should we not do instead of what are we going to do? And you can reframe all of these policies around what this means for the American people instead of saying, what did Obama do wrong? And we've got to stop that. We've got to change the conversation. And I think we can do that because those policies really are for the American people, but they're not being framed that way. Lee Carter, Jessica Tarlov, good to see you both. Thank you. Thank you. For more on this developing story, stay with foxnews.com. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for watching.